So as a former central banker myself doing research on mortgage markets, this paper is very close to my heart. So why do we care about the findings of this paper? Well, we're interested in how monetary policy transmits to households. And so, because most, most households and most mortgage market systems across the world have fixed rate mortgages, we require households to actually take action in order to benefit from, for instance, policy rate decreases. So households have to refinance in order to actually obtain the new rate. And there's ample evidence for demand side frictions that households don't seem to refinance on time and don't seem to um, refinance in accordance with the actual monetary refinancing incentives. So where this paper is coming in is to think about refinancing frictions from the supply side. And there's maybe more benign fr frictions from the supply side, so there's potentially refinancing criteria and lending standards that are set by the lender and they may vary and they may um, keep from some households from refinancing, even though they would want to. Secondly, there's also been research that shows that um, there's uh, individual incentives that maybe some lenders have to modify these loans. So there's some level of lender discretion um, in order to allow refinancing. And so this paper is studying a different angle, which is to study the role of local competition when the incumbent bank can refuse to refinance. So the paper builds a bargaining model of refinancing and tests the predictions using novel Belgian mortgage data. The key findings are that household refinancing seems to go up with local mortgage market competition. And secondly, external refinances, so refinances with a bank other than the incumbent lender, seem to go up with additional bank relationships that the borrower has. And so, it's a, it's a great privilege to discuss a paper that's a very early stage work. It was a great read. And so I'm going to, I'm going to use my, 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 my discussion points to possibly point to promising um, directions that the paper could take from here. In particular, first of all, we want to establish that, so this in, the setting is really interesting, and I, I think I'm curious about more institutional detail in order to understand if the mechanism that the model in particular posits is plausible, and talk about potential directions being aware of data limitations, and also linked to a broader bank literature that the paper hints to and which I think could be emphasized more in particular with respect to relationship lending, where um, yeah, bank, the banking, banking papers have already studied um, dynamics where incumbents may have information advantages relative to uh, external banks. So to summarize the model in my own words uh, in one slide, so the setting is as follows. Households have a positive refinancing incentive, so we're just taking that as given. So the current rate that they have locked in is higher than prevailing market rates, so they should refinance. There's a switching cost for an external refinance, so switching to another lenders, denoted C. And there's a probability of, of a successful switch, beta, that you, you can interpret as bargaining power. I, I, I find that, I find that uh, easier to interpret. There's full information. So um, the, the incumbent lender knows the household's outside option. And lastly, which I think is important for some of my comments that, that, that will follow, households are assumed to be homogenous. So every borrower is, borrower is the same. There's no default, and there's also no variation in creditworthiness, in particular, potentially unobserved variation in creditworthiness. So there's a three-stage bargaining process, and the author solved this model backwards. So in, in the last stage, Bank A offers the borrower the interest rate, and I, I like to think of this, I think it's simpler to think of this in terms of interest rates. So the bank offers borrower the rate of bank A, which is somewhere between the current interest rate R0 and the prevailing market rate R1. And the bank, because it knows the household's outside option, is going to set that, set that rate to the expected net switching benefit of the household. In stage two, Bank B offers, that's just an assumption, Bank B offers the competitive market rate R1, and the borrower is going to accept this offer if the value of, of refinancing, net of the switching cost, is positive. And so that leads us to stage one, where at stage one, the bank, again, knows the outside option of the borrower, and so if it knows that the net switching benefit is negative, it's going to basically um, just, just, uh, just going to be able to offer R0 because it knows the household has nowhere else to go. Okay, so this leads to these outcomes um, that Francois talked about. So there's group one, which is captive borrowers with a high switching cost who can only get the, the existing rate, so they can't refinance. There's group two, 
um, these are internal refinances who, who are going to get um, RA, sort of rate, the, the rate that's somewhere in between, set by Bank A. And there's the group of external refinancers who can get R1, the competitive market rate, by paying the switching cost. And so the authors um, also derive comparative statics, in particular with respect to the switching costs and the probability of success. Okay, so I want to start with, let's think about what the mechanism is in this model. So the model suggests that there's a lack of refinancing despite household actions. So households want to refinance, but the lenders can refuse to refinance at prevailing market rates. Now, I, I have some experience working and, and, and uh, understanding the UK mortgage market institutional setting. So there's also, um, this, this has been uh, studied um, a little bit to kind of switch the difference between internal and external refinances where households switch. And there's a, a market study by the conduct regulator, the FCA, that found that the rates, conditional observes, observables, are relatively similar. Now, that was a relatively coarse uh, study. And so um, this, this may be a potential avenue where, where just more data would be very helpful. I think it's difficult to imagine that lenders can outright refuse to offer market rates given the same observables. So the regulator, I would assume that the regulator would have to step in uh, given that the regulator is interested in having the interest rate decreases pass through the, through the household. Um, and so I, I, don't, I, 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 uh, I think a little bit more color on um, how realistic the outright refusal could be um, would be helpful. There's a relatively coarse mapping from the model to the data. So both empirical findings, the, both the role of local competition and the, and the effect of existing bank relationships would be consistent with something which I think of as like a classic um, um, kind of con confounding mechanism, which is unobserved marketing and advertising effort by these banks that are competing. Um, so I think sharper tests, and which is where I will go with some of my other comments, will likely require data on interest rates. Um, so there's a paper by Stephen Ongena and co-authors in Norway that has, has data on switching and the kind of um, offers that these um, borrowers actually obtain. So that, that may be an avenue. I think also within the, the, current, um, the current information that you have, um, I think there's more that could be done to kind of differentiate between these different hypotheses. And in addition, um, I was wondering about... Um, you know, there's an optimal refinancing problem which really differs across countries depending on the interest rate regime. So most countries have prepayment penalties, which really changes the optimal refinancing problem for households. So just a little bit more institutional detail on that side, also including variation in how long are people actually locked in and potentially the role of brokers, like how large are they, how common is it, and that could potentially step in. That would be helpful. Okay. Um, here's some auxiliary questions on the model and data, given that some of my other comments are, if we had more data, here's maybe possibly um, um, promising directions. So um, I think the determinant the, in the model, households are just made indifferent between the internal refi and the switch. So the, in the paper, I think you verbally invoke um, heterogeneity across banks and costs that may um, lead to different results with predictions for relative interest rates. If that's the case, and maybe this is something that you can obtain, maybe you can exploit variation in different banks' costs and kind of study that within the local, within, within the local markets. Um, I find even though switching costs and differences in the bargaining power are interesting, I, I, I think they're difficult to match in the data. So just, you know, the question why you have that. And what happens if there is free entry? So maybe you want to have a comparative static with respect to competition itself. Um, and lastly, and the way I kind of found it easier to think about the model is there seems to be straightforward predictions for prices, maybe less so about the quantities that you measure, or maybe just be more explicit about, about, about how, where, where, these predict where, or where, where, where that maps to the model. Okay. The next category of, 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 um, of or maybe the assumption that, that I want to question is that, or, and that, that is obviously stylized, is that borrowers are homogenous. So we have ample reasons to believe that external refinancers are plausibly selected. So they could be adversely selected. There's a paper by Sumit Agarwal and co-authors that is called Searching for Approval. So people who search a lot may actually be households who get rejected from different banks and banks won't know that. This may be less likely for refi. So that's, that's just one, one, uh, one, potential, one potential way of selection. I think there's in particular um, uh, reason to believe that there's advantageous selection. So households with better fundamentals will leave their current contract and they, and in order to obtain, because they have better outside options, so they're going to leave. And there's this really cool job market paper by Scott Nelson that looks at un, in unsecured credit markets, so, uh, so credit card markets, um, that borrow, uh, lenders, incumbent lenders learn 
uh, about unobservable characteristics of their borers, and they're going to reprice accordingly. And so some of this, once you disallow this in his part paper, this leads to dynamic market unraveling. So this is one way in which a selection um, um, could go. Um, I myself, for instance, have done work on uh, mortgage markets, and I find that, for instance, selection into different contract types doesn't seem to be as severe as um, relate, uh, related papers in unsecured credit markets. So maybe in the mortgage market, the LTV that I mentioned, the, way, the fact that you can measure the collateral and that these are markets where typically um, you don't have, um, there's full recourse, um, and may actually alleviate that problem. Um, lastly, um, there's a paper by Belgi Ba Yevar et al. Um, that studies um, internal and external refinances in the UK. So you may want to take a look at that paper, and they find that home equity extraction is also more likely with external refinances. So um, uh, just to emphasize, uh, this, this sort of further empirical uh, uh, investigation may help inform the emphasis for further model extensions. Okay, and lastly, and very briefly, um, the paper alludes to this, and I think this is a really interesting um, 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 area to, to emphasize more, is that one could interpret the switching cost as the information advantage of the incumbent, similar to the idea of relationship lending in banking, where the incumbent, basically because they, they obtain this information by working with you, they can kind of keep you hostage because they have that information and nobody else does. Um, so one way to test some of these dynamics may be, and I... I wasn't aware that you actually have um, information on defaults, um, so maybe this is actually something that you could test, is whether, well, you, and you may, but you may require um, interest rate information, is that do incumbents do, is there evidence that incumbents have this information advantage because they observe your, say, repayment behavior? So do they change, they, do they charge you higher rates in response to, for instance, unobservably higher probability of default? So that's not observed by outsiders, but they may be observing your internal repayment behaviors if you're making your repayments on time or if you're missing them. And so they could price that in interest rates. So you could, you, that would be a plausible test, um, which does require data on mortgage rates and, and outcomes and, and loan performance. And lastly, there's a, there's, a, there's a broader, I think, still open question on the, on the, on the effect of competition, and uh, in particular in the presence of asymmetric information. So there's this idea by, for instance, Broca has an uh, old uh, sort of uh, yeah, historical, almost uh, econometrica paper where um, adverse selection, given sort of unobserved um, things that, 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 that may affect credit outcomes, um, and the winner's curse, if, you, if, if um, lenders compete on interest rates, and you may be picking up uh, borrowers who are unobservably worse. And so that leads to some monopoly power, even though you have entry. So that's, I think that these are sort of broad directions that I think the paper could, could emphasize more. So just to conclude, I think the paper is after a really important question, namely, to what extent does competition alleviate refinancing inertia? I think an interesting sub-question is, to what extent do information asymmetry, so this, re this relationship between incumbents and externals, prevent competition? And I think it's a very interesting paper. There's promising extensions, which may require a little bit more data, but I think there's, there's things that could be done intermediary and in, in, in the intermediate way, and I look forward to future iterations. Thank you very much. Thank you.